is the Writer's Almanac for Friday, April the 30th, 2021. It's the birthday of Annie Dillard, born in Pittsburgh, 1945. In her mid-20s, she was living near Tinker Creek in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia. She kept a journal, 20 volumes of a journal, and made a book out of it, Pilgrim at Tinker Creek, which was a big bestseller, came out in 1974, wrote a memoir about growing up in Pittsburgh called An American Childhood. Annie Dillard, who said, one of the few things I know about writing is this, spend it all, shoot it, play it, lose it all right away every time. Do not hoard what seems good for a later place in the book or for another book. Give it, give it all, give it now. Anything you do not give freely and abundantly becomes lost to you. You open your safe and you find ashes. It's the birthday of Alice B. Toklas, born in San Francisco, 1877. She was a gifted pianist. She went off to Paris where she met Gertrude Stein in 1907. Stein hired Toklas as her secretary. They fell in love. They moved in together in 1910, and they lived together until Gertrude Stein's death in 1946. Gertrude Stein left most of her estate, including their valuable art collection, to Toklas, but since their relationship was not legally recognized, Gertrude Stein's relatives disputed her right to have and to sell the art, and so Alice B. Toklas spent her later years in financial difficulty and very poor health. It was on this day in 1939, the first television broadcast live aired to between 100 and 200 television sets in New York City. President Franklin D. Roosevelt spoke at the opening of the New York World's Fair. Around 1,000 people were watching at home, it was estimated. It was carried on the NBC network, which began regular programming thereafter. Although mass-produced televisions did not enter the market until about seven years later, and by the early 1950s, half of all Americans owned a TV set. It's the birthday of the poet John Crow Ransom, born Pulaski, Tennessee, 1888. He was part of the Fugitives, a group of Southern writers that included Robert Penn Warren, Alan Tate. He was the founder of the Kenyan Review, and he was one of the first people, John Crow Ransom, to argue that American schools should be teaching American literature, not just British and European, and that students should be reading modern poetry and not only the classics. And it was on this date in 1859, the story first appeared in magazine form, the story that begins, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, it was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness, Charles Dickens's A Tale of Two Cities. Here's a poem for today by Kay Ryan, entitled Don't Look Back. This is not a problem for the necklace. Fish cannot recklessly swivel their heads to check on their fry. No one expects this. They are torpedoes of disinterest, compact capsules that rely on the odds for survival, unfollowed by the exact and modest number of goslings the esnecked goose is, who, if she looks back, acknowledges losses and if she does not, also loses. Don't Look Back by Kay Ryan. That's the Writer's Almanac for Friday, April the 30th. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch. <laughs>